All right, Caleb Williams met with the Bears. You know, it's funny is I've known Caleb for about, you know, a couple years, multiple uh, opportunities to meet him. Always classy, always smart, always thoughtful, good sense of humor. But it's amazing in this day and age, you know, it could be Angel Reese, it could be Caleb Williams. You say one or two things on television and people make this big judgment on who you are. And it's like, well, that's not necessarily fair. Who you are can't be defined by running up and hugging your mom or putting something on your fingernails or a little trash talking to basketball for. That's not who anybody is. It's just a moment in time. So I, I like Caleb. I met him multiple times. What did you hear about the meeting with Chicago? I like Caleb too. I got a chance to speak with him at length at the combine where I had a tweet that went out that went viral in a way that I didn't expect it would. And it was just that he didn't compete in any of the drills on Saturday, but when all the quarterbacks and wide receivers were done, I watched as I was on the field in Indianapolis, Caleb Williams go over and shake and thank every single person who worked the event from the NFL side and from the Lucas oil stadium side, all the workers at the stadium and just thank them. And he was the last person to leave. And of course that goes viral and everyone's like, Oh, he was acting. I don't think it is. I don't think he is acting. So the Bears have now had two dinners with Caleb Williams. Let me explain them. The pro day, which was a couple of weeks ago, they took him to a place called Bird Streets in Los Angeles, which is a private members club. And it is the H. Wood Group, which does Delilah and Nice Guy. And they had him there. And it was kind of cool for the Bears guys. And I spoke to sources there to see how Caleb kind of operates in that L.A. scene. So at that dinner... They're there in a, in, at a table, but there's also celebrities. I think uh, Quavo from the Migos was there, Quavo from the Migos, and uh, Jamie Foxx was there. And like just seeing how Caleb's comfort level was. And you know, the one thing that the Bears have told me in that interaction was he moves quietly. He's not a look at me guy. Yeah. If anything, he's kind of quiet and a little bit more reserved than you would imagine from the Heisman Trophy number one overall pick who made all this NIL money. So they loved their meeting with him there. They loved their combine experience with him. And then they had him in to Lake Forest, which is where the Bears facility is, Hallis Hall. They took him to a place called Sophia Steak two nights ago, which is not Chicago Cut. It's not Gibson's. It's not as Chicago. It's more in the burbs. And it, it was interesting. They said they loved watching Caleb interact with their people on their turf. Then they had him in Hallis Hall yesterday, and he was fantastic. One thing to note Dallas Turner, the star pass rusher from Alabama, who is also going to be a top 10 pick, was in the building also. And it was cool to see them interact a little bit. Here's the defensive player. Here's Caleb. The Bears also have the ninth overall pick. They're going to meet with all the top prospects. But uh, Caleb Williams has checked every box for the Chicago Bears. And I would be beyond shocked if he's not the first overall pick. We largely acknowledge that McVay, Andy Reid, Sean Payton, Kyle Shanahan, we kind of know who the big dogs are offensively coaching in this league. I think Kevin Stefanski should be near that group, and I think Kevin O'Connell is the rising mm. star. He's the McVay. He just hasn't had the star quarterback. He hasn't had the Stafford yet. I could argue he golfs better than Kirk Cousins as a, as a, as a prospect, as a talent. And so... I really do think they're moving up. I, I said yesterday, I think everybody should move down, whereas I think Atlanta, Tennessee, Chicago should stay put. And then I looked at Minnesota, and I'm like, I'd move up. And, and so do you believe they will? And do you believe they've already decided, Shrags? They've made their call in the building. They're not going to tell us who their quarterback is. Well, they've done a couple things quietly. They acquired the 23rd overall pick also in a trade with Houston, which gives them ammo if they want to say, let's package the 11 and the 23. We can move up to the top five, perhaps. They also, the Darnold signing is interesting because I'll tell you this. There were other teams interested in Darnold, Washington being one of them. And Washington ended up with Mariota. And Washington is the number two overall pick. But he, Darnold chose chose to go to Minnesota with other options where he could have been you know, competing for a starting job also. But I think the fact that it was a one-year deal tells Darnold that, hey, there's also going to be someone else coming. So at 11, do they get the prize pick? No. But if they package 11 and 23, can they move up? Sure. Uh, I think Minnesota is a team to watch for sure, and that's an obvious one. I think Denver's a team to watch. I've told this story before, but I'll, I'll just bring you in on it. Um, you know, Sean Payton and I worked together on that Fox NFL kickoff show. Yeah. He became a dear friend. He's fantastic. And one of the stories he's told me multiple times is that 
he had every intention of drafting Patrick Mahomes 11th overall in the 2017 NFL draft or 2018 NFL draft. He wanted Mahomes. He even told Breeze ahead of time, like, we're going to be doing this deal if Mahomes slips there. Andy Reid jumped right above him one spot, and he's always wondered, what if? I, I don't think Sean Payton wants to be caught with, 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 with his hands tied again and say, oh, my gosh, if I just had traded up and had just gotten our guy. So I think the Broncos are a team to watch if they can find the ammo. But the team that I keep hearing over and over and over again is that 13 spot, the Raiders and a quarterback, very specifically Jaden Daniels. And the reason being the amazing relationship Antonio Pierce, their head coach has with Jaden Daniels. Those two were together at Arizona state. Yeah. Antonio Pierce, of course, an assistant coach to Herm Edwards yep. and Jaden Daniels, their star quarterback. They have a real bond and a real relationship. Tom Telesco, a guy that you and I both respect yep. the hell out of, does he have what it takes to move up and somehow get to the two spot or the three spot to get Jaden Daniels, it might be just too high in the draft to go and get him. But I could tell you the Raiders would be a prime team to move up and get that player if he was available. Uh, Stephon Diggs move. Great for Houston uh, when you got the quarterback on the rookie pay scale. Um, I don't love it. Um, Sean McDermott's taken years to figure out the run game. Now he's got to reinvent the, the, the perimeter passing game in a draft. And again, it took them forever to get the running back right. Uh, I do. They have upgraded at tight end, but Buffalo to me doesn't feel as good as last year. What, what say you on that? Well, Kincaid in a ways is a wide receiver. The way they used him, he was their first round pick from a year ago, who they were shocked they were even to get in the twenties. So yeah. they look at him as a wide receiver tight end hybrid. So they say, okay, we got him. We got this kid Shakir, and we lose Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs. I will tell you, coming back from the combine. If you had asked me the day after, will Stefan Diggs be a Buffalo Bill next year? I'd say I'd, I I doubt that. He lasted this long, another month after the combine. It just seemed like it was time uh, from both sides. Another offseason of Diggs' cryptic tweets and, and Diggs getting a year older. He's going to be great in Houston. He's going to be motivated. He's going to be wonderful compliment to Nico Collins and Tank Dell. Uh, for Buffalo, the, it felt like it was time, and they get a second-round pick. They also have a first round pick. Now, remember, this draft, as we get closer and closer, Colin, is really strong at two positions, offensive tackle and wide receiver. Those are two positions that Buffalo could be looking at. They bring back Deion Dawkins, of course. But if you have a first and second round pick now, and then you have another second round pick, and you're looking at a wide receiver rich draft, a really deep one where these guys come in and they're ready to play right away, that makes it a little easier to digest. Um it was a good era for Stephon Diggs yep. in Buffalo. He proved that he is a number one wide receiver. Sometimes it's time. By the way, I got about a minute left. Uh, Caitlin Clark, uh, you have an NFL tie you thought of? Yes, it's a real tie. I was at the Combine two years ago, and Iowa's women's team are staying at the same hotel as me. And it's the Combine in February, and it's the Women's Big Ten Tournament. And Caitlin Clark is just getting on the scene, lighting it up. Scores about 30 in a... Big 10 tournament team and the entire women's team is in the lobby and the SID at Iowa pulls me aside and says, you're the host of that morning show on NFL network. I said, sure. And she goes, you're on Fox. I go, yeah. She goes, you know, our star player, Caitlin, she's a diehard chiefs fan. I go, really? <laughs> she loves Mahomes. I go, that's amazing. So I get the woman's information, the SID, we exchange information. She puts me on a text chain with this Caitlin Clark, who's a 20 year old phenom. And I'm just like, Hey, good luck this weekend. She goes and scores 40. I eventually put her on a text chain with Brett Veach, the general manager of the chiefs. We're on a text chain, the three of us before every one of these Iowa games, Veach and I are texting Caitlin Clark. Who's now the biggest sports star in the world. <laughs> Good luck today. And she's like, thanks guys. Um, <laughs> she is hardcore football fan loves Patrick Mahomes. They are now obviously doing insurance commercials at the same company. Uh, it's cool to watch her rise. And I think she represents everything we love about sports. She works hard. She's relatively humble. And I think she's self-aware and gosh, the sky's the limit. So if you're asking me who I'm pulling for the rest of the way, I love this UConn team. I dig the NC state story. And of course, South Carolina, those guys are those, those ladies are juggernauts, but uh, I'm Caitlin Clark. Let's go team Caitlin Schrager. It's always all these great insights from Peter Schrager. That one came out. I like that. And it would, that, that's the last thing I thought I'd hear a Caitlin Clark Mahomes story. Yeah. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. You're the man, Colin. Thanks always. And uh, Jordan, keep on kicking butt as well. All right. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. 
Thanks again for making us part of your day.